much for attending today's webinar. Um, it's brought to you by Tickmail, and uh, we are on the uh, Tuesday's live uh, webinar at the moment. And uh, I guess you guys have just checked earlier on, you guys can see my screen and uh, as well as hear my voice. So welcome, a big welcome to you guys. Thank you very much for your time in joining my webinar. I will be looking into the live chart uh, onto the uh, MT4, Tickmill MT4 uh, platform, and we'll be going through a couple of trade ideas with you, uh, doing a bit of a market analysis using geometric patterns as well, and uh, a bit of a play with price action, looking into price action as well. So I've got the Tickmill presentation slide right here, um, and uh, I, I would like, be just before we start, I'd like to very quickly read to you the uh, webinar disclaimer right there okay and uh, here it's, it's just going to take about a minute or so uh, less than that so trading financial products such as cfds on margin carries a high degree of risk and it's not suitable for all investors losers losses sorry can exceed the initial investment um, please ensure you, you fully understand the risk and take appropriate care to manage your risk. And on top of that, I would like to just add uh, with regards to the uh, trade ideas, it's not, uh, you know, 100% um, to uh, to um, to just uh, tell you what to trade and things like that. So it's for educational purposes only. But uh, of course, we have got the... Um, we have got the uh, techniques and skills that I would like to share with you on geometric trading method and geometric patterns analysis. So various others that you um, as the trader could actually apply that practically onto your trade. You can always start uh, with a demo account and uh, have that decided by yourself on when would you like to go onto the demo account and do um, actually contact your account managers for any um, any questions with regards to your account uh, or anything that, uh, you know, with regards to the broker taking itself. Okay, guys, so let's just start. I've got a couple of things I would like to share with you uh, tonight, uh, this evening. And we have got, uh, firstly, I would like to go into the USD uh, JPY uh, right there. Uh, the reason for that is because of last week's um, uh, analysis as well. I mean, we have um, been giving some trade ideas uh, in uh, my community uh, group as well uh, as um, the Epic Geometry Group as well as um, onto the, the market and looking at experts as well um, have actually, uh, you know, looked into um, the USD as, as bullish, you know, giving bullish sentiments for the USD as well. But I want to uh, bring you straight onto the chart. You're looking at the USD JPY on 30 minutes at the moment, and you have seen that some appreciation have actually gone up. I would like to, uh, you know, help you understand the market uh, by looking at the chart uh, overall, compare at least three time frames to understand the trend. And once the um, the trend has been, um, you know, understood or determined clearly, then it would give you a, a a better idea on what on how to proceed with analyzing the market further, including drawing patterns and identifying price action, support, resistance levels, and all that kind of thing. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to look into uh, the market uh, mainly. Uh, comparing time frames, uh, a set of three time frames would actually do the job quite well. So I usually start off with a one hour chart, as I've mentioned, four hour and daily. But just before that, I know some of you guys may be wondering, what are these three lines that I have got? I mean, I've, I've covered that already, but I would like to just mention to you that um, before I start my trend analysis, I usually have three exponential moving averages applied onto my screen. And uh, by by no means it's used to uh, you know it's used based on crosses or anything like that no nothing like that but I will explain to you how do I actually use three exponential moving averages on there so uh, the three exponential moving averages or EMAs are the fifty exponential moving average the hundred as well as the two hundred they're all applied on close so you apply one by one uh, and then you could save that very easily as your template and upload it at any time okay so i just want to give you a bit of an idea you go on to the insert for those of you guys who are new totally with indicators let's say you go on to the trend because it is a trend type indicator so i'm solely using it as a trend indicator okay not to enter not not to exit so if i go on to a moving average right there as you can see uh, you've got the period right there right so you start off with the 50 and then you insert the 100 and then the 200 so they have 
three types, three types of exponential moving averages that's on the screen. Every time that I trade, I have these three on. Okay, and then make sure that the MA, instead of a simple one, I'm using an exponential one, mainly because I've been using it for the past seven years. It's been um, uh, really good to me, and uh, I, I see that there's no... Um, you know, reason for me to change moving averages and things like that. It's been working really well. And uh, for your information, the three exponential, especially moving averages, uh, 50, 100, and 200 are the same ones that you would see applied on uh, various, um, you know, big channels, big, uh, uh, you know, uh, business channels like Bloomberg, uh, CNBC, or even CNN. So when they actually, you know, sort of highlight certain pairs, you'll see that these three are the ones that they actually use as well. So um, you've got the 150 to 200. Uh, and once you apply that, make sure it's applied to close. And then you choose the colors that you want as long as you can differentiate uh, between the three. OK, so here, for example, what I'm looking at usually is I'm looking at three charts, um, three time frames. So I start off with my one hour. I'll compare that to my four hour and my daily chart. What do I compare? I actually don't compare, but I match. So I would like to see whether or not there's a match of trend in three time frames, a set of three time frames. So what that would do then is to give me an idea of whether that trend is getting stronger. So if you've got a, an uptrend, you need to understand whether or not, or ask the question whether or not that uptrend is getting from, is actually getting from strong to stronger or weak to weaker. That's basically it. Okay. So you, um, you don't want to be looking at a trend on a one time frame on, on just one time frame and look at it as strong but then on the other side of the world it may actually be weakening so because for example you are here in this part of the world and you're looking at an australian dollar and for example the in australia it's already you know um, past uh, work time there's no office hours anymore and people are you know, uh, relaxing at home and things like that. So uh, as you can see, you know, everything quietening down there. It's not working time there. So it's, it's not your typical nine to six time there. So um, a trend uh, wouldn't actually be strengthening at that time, you see, because it's sleeping time at that time. So that's, that's basically it, you know, because it's, it's driven by human beings at the end of the day. So this is what you want to be understanding is to get more data. So if you've got um, a combination of time frames, that actually means that you've got more data that's fed into it to give you a better, bigger picture. OK, that's basically what we want to do. Now, what you want to actually look at are two things. When you look at each time frame, the set of three time frames, when you start off with one time frame, you want to be looking at two things, which are the three, the, the, the way the three um, exponential moving averages are actually moving. That's number one. Number two, you want to look at the position of the candles, whether they are above all three lines or they are under all three lines. That's really, really important. OK, when they're actually above all three lines, OK, that actually means that they're, you know, um, the bias is bullish. And if they are under all three lines, for example, and bias would be bearish. Now, the further away the candles are traveling above, the stronger the trend. OK, but that's why I put it as number one to actually look at how the three lines are actually moving. Now, I'll give you an example here. If you've got three lines, they are not tangled, they're not entangled, they're not touching an, uh, one another, and they're actually separated quite well, and they're following the direction of the trend, then that's a very good sign. So this one here, you've got candles, let's say uh, this area here, you've got candles under all three lines, correct? And then you've got um, all three lines are separated to one another, and they're pointing down to the floor as well. So there you've got, there, there you've got um, a strong indication of a bearish trend right there, okay? And it's totally opposite for the uptrend. On the uptrend, you want all candles to be above all three lines, and you want the three lines to be pointing up towards the sky. As simple as that. So you've got these two things to actually really look at when you want to determine the trend. Now, here, for example, what if you've got candles in between all three lines? When you've got candles in between all three lines like that, okay, um, this indicates sideway uncertain type market okay so you don't want candles you know at a glance you want to actually cut your analyzing your your market analysis time uh, by just going through three time three time frames and not proceed further if you have caught the candles at the time to be in between three lines there's just no point doing anything else 
okay, because it's uncertain. If the market is in doubt, you as a trader should stay out, as simple as that, okay? So here, for example, you have got candles in between, but then current candles, they are above all three lines. But remember, I've mentioned that you need, number one, to look at how the three lines are actually moving currently. OK, the three lines here, you see that you've got a bit of a touch right there between the 50 and the 100 moving average. Correct. You see, and you've got these three lines um, just traveling sideways. They're not pointing upwards. They're not pointing downwards. So that actually means that the market may actually go into a little bit of an uncertainty with regards to trend. OK, so very simple. You've got all the candles. Um, most candles, these big candles right here, they're pointing upwards, of course, and they are actually above all three lines. But that the, the, the position of the candles are not matching with the way the three lines are actually moving. So you've got a bit of a mismatch. OK, you've got a bit of a divergence going on right there. Uh, you've got um, uh, it's not it's not matching properly. So it's not giving you that clear idea. You need this these two to be ticked and then you can actually proceed to understanding that, yes, it is an uptrend. Yes, it's a downtrend at the moment with that time frame. But at this stage, I must say it's still uncertain because the two doesn't actually match. OK, so uh, you've got that going on at the moment. Let's just see whether you've got a, a you, what's going on with the four hour chart in comparison to the one hour that we've just seen. Now, look at what's going on. You've got the three lines traveling very nicely to the downside. The, the steeper the three lines are traveling to the downside, the stronger the trend is. But at this moment of time, you've got these three lines pointing, let's say, like a four o'clock direction. Like if you look at your your um, your watch or your clock, if you've got three lines, the angle of the of three lines, let's say, if I zoom out a little bit, okay, you've got this angle right here. Now, if, if I zoom out, you've got that angle, not four o'clock anymore. That is quite a five o'clock type angle, which actually indicates that there may be a strong type trend or bias to the downside. Okay, but um, the, the problem with it is that it doesn't really match with the way the candles are currently moving because you've got candles entering the uncertain zone, meaning that they are in between all three lines. If they're in between the three lines, it's just that it's uncertain. A market is in doubt at the moment or they are waiting or they're positioning and they're waiting for something. OK, so they've not taken, um, you know, their their um, orders further. So it's not probably appropriate for you as a trader to actually enter the market at this stage and things like that because the market's still in doubt. So you've got all the all the candles. I mean, majority of candles now, for example, you see that one single candles touching that line right there is in between, basically considered in between three lines. So now you've got one hour that you've actually just seen to be uncertain, mainly because you've got candles above all three lines, but all three lines are not really pointing to the to a strong trend direction. OK, so it's uncertain on the one hour chart on the four hour chart, very clearly uncertain as well. We've got all three lines pointing downwards, but you've got candles position in between three lines. If you've got uncertainty on the four hour chart, now we move on to the daily chart. Now, with the daily chart, it's a little bit different in terms of its trend, right? You guys actually could see that, and perhaps you guys can make that decision and say that candles are under all three lines, and they're quite far away, reasonably far away from all three lines, quite far under, correct? And you've got all three lines pointing downwards. You've got a bit of a touch right there, but they're separated to one another, giving you a bit of a bias saying that on the daily chart, it is actually giving you an idea that it may be some bearishness, more bearishness to come. OK, but you could actually regard the one hour as your short term. OK, your H4 or four hour as your medium term and your daily as your long term. So what that actually means is that, yes, it could probably fall further or more bearishness to be expected, but more towards the long term. OK, because it's clearer towards the long term as opposed to the short and medium term. OK, I hope you guys it's clear for you guys on the trend analysis side of it. And how do we actually use the three EMA lines as your indication of trend? OK, with with respect to the, the way the candles are moving. OK, OK, so I hope that's actually been clear. Now, the other thing that I would like you guys to look at is, you know, you're actually crossing uh, sort of like cross, crossing the highway, a very, very busy highway of the foreign exchange market when you're actually looking at the chart. Why I say that is because you could actually literally look right and left 
when you look right, you're looking at the price now, current price, whether it's close to a psychological level and things like that. We'll cover the psychological level uh, on Thursdays because Thursdays um, are the days that um, Tickman Tick will be organizing this webinar through me uh, in conducting uh, tutorials on specific topics. So we'll cover money management, risk management, and different days and different, uh, you know, covering uh, topics on different days. So uh, we have got, um, of course, Fibonacci as well, covered ratios, and we've also got psychological numbers. Now, I'll just be very brief on the psychological number side because we will cover that in the tutorial section on Thursdays. Okay, so here, for example, on the right, you have got 107.53, okay? Uh, that is a price for USD uh, versus the yen. And 107.53, 53 is the, is the two digits, the last digits at the very back, which is three or two. We, we just omit that. So I would like only two decimal places right after the decimal point, okay? So um, I look at it as 107.52. Now, 52 itself on its own, it's really close to the 50 psychological number. What that actually means is that uh, there may be a reversal, you know, due very, very soon within 10 pips or so. Okay, within 10 pips above this price, current price now, or 10 pips below, there may uh, be a reversal due. Uh, the reason is because price now or current price is just too close to the psychological number of 107.50. Now, when you look right, you look at the current price and you compare that, uh, I wouldn't say compare that, but to relate that with psychological numbers. How close is current the current price to the psychological levels? Okay, that's one, when you look right. Now, when you look left, because you are a buyer at the moment and you're looking at this, um, what do you call that, this strong candle, bullish candle going up. So if you were to be in the market for an up candle, this would be you as a buyer. If you are a buyer, when you look left, you need to look at your competitor, which which could, which would be the sellers, correct? The sellers are the one that will take you out when you are buying, correct? So you need to look at the sellers. If you're buying, you need to look at sellers to the left as well as significant support and resistance. But now, for example, when I look left, I don't see that resistant power. I don't see a market falling previously, but I do see the market rising or have risen in the past. And it was quite a big rise up because you're looking at the daily chart and that big rise up right here is right up to about 750 pips more or less, 740 plus pips, okay? So that was a significant rise of price for the USD JPY at that time. That was roughly at 8th of uh, last year in September. Okay, so that itself was a significant rise. Why do I look at that price there? Because why do I look at that support point, that push of price up at that time? Because it is really, really close to the current price now. So hence the reason you want to look right for your price, current price in relation to psychological levels. When you look left, you want to look left the current price in relation to previous significant rise of price or fall of price. Here, very easily and very obvious, there is a, there was a very big significant uh, rise of price, a big support area right here. So based on these points right here, you can actually draw two horizontal lines that would mark your support zone due to how that was a very strong support. So what you actually do is you draw the first line on the lowest body that you can see. Very, very simple, correct? You draw the simple line, simple horizontal line, okay, based on the low, lowest body. And then you proceed to drawing it on the lowest wick that you can see, okay? So once you've done that, you have got two lines. Now, this is ideally the best way or proper way of drawing a support resistance zone or area. Now, um, it's probably best not to ever draw your support resistance based on only one single line because it's really, really risky and it's not um, giving you enough data, okay? And you need data and appropriate, correct, uh, accurate data when you're actually drawing your analysis on the chart especially, okay? So here, for example, now you could easily see that Hence the reason you have got an upward type candle on the USD JPY daily chart may actually have a little bit of a trouble 
in really proceeding upwards or you know downwards mainly because price now or current price is trapped between um, two lines that marks a significant support okay so what that actually means is if you would like to see or expect more bullish power then the candle current candle or a group of candles need to pierce through that zone that we have just drawn between this uh, using this uh, two horizontal red lines okay so the upper line was marked at 107.80 point eight zero is a psychological level on the dot okay 107.28 point 0.28 is close to another psychological number which is the 20 psychological number so what it means is very simple if you would expect more bullish power more bullishness you need price to pierce through this zone and go above 107.80 and above at least 10 pips above like 107.90 let's say then you have got a little bit more uh, power to to see that the bullishness would most probably take place a little bit more okay once it has passed through but then what if it actually goes um, opposite direction if it does actually go opposite direction and go through and come under the zone then the biasness would be more i would say stronger to the downside mainly because current candles are already under all three lines and this is based on the daily chart but again we didn't have a very good match with one hour four hour or daily now usually in order for you to increase your probability and lower your risk it's by matching at least three time frames with a trend and when the trend is strong uh, not only strong but strong to stronger because you've got three time frames um, matching with the power of the current trend. If you've got that going on, then you've got a higher probability in entering the market with um, riding that trend at that moment of time. Okay, guys, I hope that's clear for you guys. You guys are getting this? Uh, any questions at all? You guys are all right? Any questions at all at this stage? Anything that I've actually mentioned earlier on that may actually need a little bit more clarification by any chance? Okay, Kara, thank you very much for that. Appreciate that. Okay, good. So that's been clear. So that's your USDJPY on the daily chart, right? So now if I go into a lower time frame, you can always pick any set of three time frames. Okay, now if you've got small equity under the 500 mark dollars, it's probably best for you to start doing the analysis and do all kind of analysis uh, based on, let's say, lower than the one hour, up to the one hour time frame. But the four hour and the daily and all that, usually uh, it's probably best if you've got bigger equity on, on that, mainly because um, a lot of traders, they make a, uh, a big mistake, I would say, whereby they're, they're drawing and um, drawing their analysis and all that based on, let's say, a daily or a weekly chart. And then you're based on that movement on the weekly and daily chart, but then you're trading with small capital like 500 or even 100 or so. What what would then happen is that that's, that's one of the reasons how your account could be blown up like really easily, mainly because when you look into the daily chart or the weekly chart, you're expecting really big, big corrections, big reversals. These reversals cannot be sustained by your small equity account in your account, okay? I hope that makes sense. So, um, in other words, very simple. If you've got lower time, uh, low equity, you look into lower time frames. You've got medium size equity, then you look into um, slightly bigger time frame. And if you've got, you know, ten thousand US dollars and above, then you can actually afford to draw your analysis based on the four hour of the daily chart maximum. Not really the weekly or the daily, uh, weekly or the monthly. That would probably be left to um, swing type traders who would leave it open and basically bigger equity as well all right hope that makes sense okay so the usdjpy on the on the 15 minutes chart you have got prices coming downwards now okay um and it's still up above all three lines here three lines are pointing upwards on the 15 minutes chart as you go into the to the 30 minutes chart you've got a bit of an entanglement that we have noticed earlier on as well okay um but then it's high up there but you've got a bit of a correction now now the other thing as well with corrections let's say um, if it's an uptrend and you've got candles coming down, now if they come down and it, it's usually the, the correction are usually at either one of the exponential moving average. What I mean by that is, uh, let's say you've got, okay, like this one here is a downtrend. 
okay and price came down and you see how it found a uh, found sort of resistance at either one of the lines or a group of lines come down and then very close to the line again now this is the same with a support and uh, as prices go up come down go up again and as it comes down you see you've got support there now if you've got support or resistance at um, at either one of the lines it's usually a good sign and it's, as you can see usually the power uh, it's like a springboard you know uh, so here for example example if it goes up and then come down hence the reason you see a big spring upwards mainly because it found support at either one of the lines or all of the lines is usually a very good sign okay all right good sign for giving more power to the trend to kick up all right so here you go um that's your usdjpy right there now i would like to also because i don't see a match i find that uh, the probability is higher and the risk is lower. When I see a match in trend in three time frames, then I'm ready to draw patterns and, and show you that. So I would like to look into a pair that actually has got, um, you know, some uh, potential in terms of trend really strong and everything else is looking quite good. So it's probably uh, quite ripe to draw a pattern. So I just would like to see whether I've got that pair ready uh, for you. Now, let's just see. At the moment, I mean, you would probably notice that you've got more movements today um, as of market opened uh, US time, uh, three o'clock, Lima Sol, Cyprus time. Uh, that's where you see loads of kicking up of trend, but not yesterday. Yesterday, usually, you know, usually on Mondays is a little bit uh, slower, but uh, we have got this week uh, coming up with loads and loads of opportunities uh, for you, mainly because it's going to be a very, very volatile week. And you've got loads of vol volatility, lots of volume, uh, lots of liquidity as well in the market, uh, mainly because you've got the new Federal Reserve Chairman as well reporting uh, live with his testimony tomorrow. He testifies tomorrow. Um, not only that, we've also got you know things happening in Europe, the Eurozone as well, uh, expectations of a lot of things. You've got policies from Trump and a couple of other things to match up with the new Federal Reserve's position as well. Um, and uh, you've got um, speeches going on with the with uh, Brexit uh, situation uh, and status. So that's basically going to you know uh, be bringing up with a lot of uh, um, trading opportunities for you guys. But with trading opportunities of volatility, you've also got risks, so you need to actually measure your risk really well. So here we have got, um, let's say NZD, I think probably start off with the Euro USD uh, as one of the you know um, most uh, liquid pair as well. Uh, it's one of the biggest major uh, pair, Euro USD. Uh, let's just see what's going on with the euro usd very quickly okay i would like to uh, help you and guide you in um, time management when you do market analysis so very quickly all you do is your trend analysis and you've got your three emas right there we're looking at euro usd we start off with the one hour chart as you start off the one hour chart you look into the position of candles number one number one is the the, the way the three lines ema moves okay number one don't don't, don't forget that. Then you've got your candles movement. Uh, the number of candles, the current candles, are they actually under all three lines or above all three lines? So here itself, very easy. Three lines moving sideways. They're not pointing downwards. They need to actually follow the trend and the candles. Okay, this one here is a mismatch. So one hour chart, okay, throw that out of the window uh, because it's just not giving you that clarity of trend. Now, the same thing goes for the Euro USD on the four hour chart. Now, on the four hour chart here, you can actually see that prices are indeed you know, falling. So a lot of traders, what they do is that they straight away make up their mind and say that, oh, it's a downtrend because you see you've got the candles going down. Now, it's not really wise to make your trend decision, decision of trend through your trend analysis, just based on a single candle or, you know, two, three big candles like that it doesn't actually make any, you know, sense to actually follow that because that's basically how you may be taken out of the market. Okay, uh, so this one here, you throw out in the window as well for our charts, not giving you a, a very good clarity of trend, mainly because of the mismatch. Now here on the Euro USD daily chart, long term, you have got a little bit bias, I would say, to the upside, mainly because of the way the three lines are moving to the upside. You still have candles above the three lines, but not very far above. You've got the, the candles now moving downwards, and they're actually finding maybe, potentially, finding support at this line right here. Okay, now I want to go back to the one hour chart. Now, when you're looking at candles uh, moving like this, okay, 
I'm just going to the four hour chart because you've got more data and it may be a little bit clearer for you. Okay, so here, for example, um, you're looking at the euro USD on the four hour chart. Now, you see that it's already not very clear uh, in terms of trend because you've got a mismatch, correct? You've got mismatch between the three lines, you've got mismatch between the three, sorry, between the three lines and the way the candles are moving. They're actually moving under, but then it's it's mismatched. Uh, with the way the three lines are actually moving sideways. Okay, the sideways is a three o'clock type angle that gives you the sentiments of uncertainty, holding the position, not sure yet, uh, waiting for something big to happen, and then right along the trend. So that actually is what's happening probably. Okay, even though you've got this one, uh, these big candles down here. Now, the big candles are falling and they are bearish candles driven by sellers. Correct? Now, on the way down as sellers, sellers get really excited, go downwards, let's say they they sell and they sell, okay? So the, the, the longer the candles would actually be. But then all these candles, who would they be taken out by? They would be taken out by previous buyers, by previous very strong, significant buyers. So how do you do that to know where they are? Where are the location of these buyers that might actually just turn the market around and push it upwards. You look to the left, you see you've got some support right here. Now, this support here is quite a strong support, mainly because it found support on the spring of the 200 exponential moving average. Okay, so you've got that area to look at. You've also got that area to look at. Okay, even though it didn't touch any one of the line, but that one there is much a stronger support area, correct? So all this group or family of candles is what you want to pay your attention to, all right? You want to be drawing a uh, support zone based on that family of candles right here to give you an indication of where the, the fall will stop and may actually start to rise, okay? So how do you do that? You do that by drawing two horizontal lines, very, very easy. Right now, you look at the lowest candle that you can see in this family of candles, the lower bodies here, not that one there, not that one there, but the lowest body that you can see is right there. Correct? So you draw a line on the lowest body, okay? And then you proceed in drawing the line based on the lowest wick, lowest needle, right? There you go. Now you have got two lines, very, very easy. You've got the two lines that marks a significant support area. Now you can look back and see how on those lines, on the, these two lines that you've drawn, um, that's where support has actually happened. You've got some more support, you've got support, more support, more support, and a very significant support right here. This is quite a significant support mainly, not only because it sprang forth from the 200 moving average, but look at the size of it. That's about 350 pips or so, okay, of that rise up. And it went through all three lines, it went above all three lines, and you see it reached up there. So that's quite a significant support. Now, with that significant support, you have drawn a significant support zone. So that support zone has now marked exactly where the wick of the current price or current candle has actually rested upon. Again, it is confirming that this area may actually be a very significant support zone. Okay. Does that make sense for you guys? Yeah. Now, let's just prove a point. If you go on the daily chart, <coughs> oh, excuse me for that. I still have this uh, bit of a cough going on. So um, here, for example, if I just scroll and we're looking into, let me just make sure. We've got the rate lines that was marked by the rate lines, right? Okay, good. So if I zoom out, and I look at the big picture. I want to look at the, the, the two lines again. I just want to scroll and make sure and look at how did the, how did the previous candle behaved uh, in respect uh, to the two rate lines that marks a significant support in the past. Okay, I just want to look at it now. Look at this one here. Now, back in, that was back in, in 2012, in August itself, there was a significant rise from that area, from the area we have just drawn today, okay? A significant rise has brought to about 900 plus pips up. Of course, it took some weeks, months, and years, years, basically, and, and then it reached right up there. But then 
it actually sprung from the two lines area that we have just marked off today. Okay, so that actually um, is a very, very significant support. So that's just to confirm, to let you know that here, this area is a very, very strong support. So you need to watch out for this one here. So it's really no point to actually uh, be excited with selling the Euro USD when you're actually looking at just the candles. If you've got less information, what you would do is make mistakes. OK, so when you actually make mistakes, then you, uh, you know, will regret it later on, of course. But then, you know, you you go into the market without extra data. Now, you need these extra data and they are actually very, very simple to actually uh, have by drawing simple lines like I've just shown you guys. So here, for example, yes, you have got traders, maybe <coughs> they got really excited initially and then they go into the sell and then they wonder, oh, why is it actually not going to my direction? Now, that's mainly because you've not looked to the left of who may have been your competitor. And that's basically competitor zone that you have actually entered. So the sellers have actually entered an area where it could easily be turned around, okay, overtaken and pushed back up, okay, mainly because of that, that, and the one that we previously have seen as well. Okay, hope that's clear. Now, this one here, just that this simple rule of understanding the trend using exponential moving average and uh, also uh, looking left and drawing your support or resistance zone. Okay, remember, not a single line, two lines. Uh, these two itself would actually cut out your risk and increase your probability. Okay, uh, just by that simple action that you've just done. Now, once you've actually have had <coughs> a clear indication of trend is usually um, how I start drawing patterns. So I would like to first go on to a chart that has got some clear indication of trend before I decide to draw patterns, okay? Um, and that, how do you actually make sure that you've got some clear indication of trend is by knowing that the three lines are pointing upwards, okay? And you've got, um, you know, candles trading either above all three lines or under all three lines. That's just, it sounds as simple as it is. And this is basically what I've used as a trader for the past 10 of the years. And basically, it has actually been working really well. And I combine that basically with the other ingredients uh, like chart patterns, uh, usage of uh, psychological numbers, Fibonacci ratios as well. And these are ingredients that I will be uh, laying it out or forth to you guys in a form of topics for the course on Thursdays by Tignio. Okay, all right. <coughs> so let's uh, get going with uh, some, <coughs> excuse me, trade ideas uh, for you guys. Let's look into the GBP um, versus uh, the USD before we look at GBP versus Czar, mainly because I would like to point out some very, very significant support zone. As you can see, I'm sharing with you now on my screen, GBP USD on the four hour chart. On the four hour chart, you could see that price is trading at the moment at 1.391617, okay? Uh, and you have got that candle right there. That's That could easily be, you know, um, people call it um, a rejection candle and things like that. Now, I don't really base on candles that much. Nowadays, I look into price action a lot and I try to look left a lot and then right on the psychological numbers a lot uh, before I proceed in any other thing. So here itself, just based on price action itself, you could see that prices, um, I mean, price now is at that price, but it, it's actually gone down pound support and just went back up with that single candle right away. But look left, you've got support right there. You've got support, support, all these touch points of support and quite a significant support right there. This is on a four hour chart. That significant support was worth about 400 plus, about 400 plus, but almost 500 pips, okay? <clears throat> so that basically is another indication that, yes, prices now, candles are depreciating. You've got candles coming downwards, but again, that coming downwards are by sellers, and who would the sellers be challenged by? It would be challenged, they would be challenged by buyers. So you've got buyers, 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 but the one that my eyes are looking at is the significant support at this area right here, 
okay that's way that's how i've drawn that um you know lowest week right there and things like that but it's based on this one here as well when i've actually drawn that one here it sort of complies with this area right here so you've got uh, quite a nice zone right there now let's just double check this zone that we've just drawn and look at how um, prizes in the past, candles in the past, have actually treated that zone that we have just drawn for the GBP USD. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now, when I pull it back right to the very, you know, quite far back. Now, this one here is as far back as uh, 2016. Okay. Um, 2016, two years ago in February. Um, yeah, 29th February. So there, that that uh, that was a significant support that has actually pushed prices up uh, by thousands, uh, 1,100 plus plus pips. Okay, of course it took some time. Okay, two years or so, uh, maybe uh, you know months and years. But here, for example, uh, is basically what has actually happened in the past. So that that push up uh, should be respected because it respected that uh, zone that we have just drawn right now okay so here for example you see how it automatically uh, gone and encapsulated that price and went right on the dot so you have actually drawn i would say quite accurately a very nice support resistance the other thing to look out for is when you've drawn that two lines you need to understand and see look past look look to the past and look back and see whether or not you you have loads of support resistant, concentrating and bouncing off these two lines that you've just drawn. That's number one. Number two, you want to also look at whether or not you've got really long candles going through, piercing through that zone. And here you've got one really long one that has pierced through. That's a good sign. Okay. And you've got several others right here as well, as you can see. And <coughs> what we can actually do is also go on to the daily candle and you can see that's where we've marked that support earlier on okay and we go really far back as well and see you've got another one right there some more support zones okay so let's just do that now here itself you can see that push right on the dot of the week and it pushed prices right up so here itself all these little little nice things that you've actually seen um like you know it's, it's the play of price action coincidental you see all that touches touch point right on the dot of a single week and then now single week right there as well as you go on you've got you know more touch point of opening prices as well candles and then you've got touch of that week right there on that line so all these ones here including the movement of a really big candles uh piercing through the two lines as well are all indication that you have drawn that support resistance zone correctly. And these are zones that needs to be respected because prices in the past have respected this zone as well. So what does that actually mean now to us with the GBP USD on the GBP uh, USD four hour chart? What that actually means is that it's finding more support. They may be biased to the upside, but it's still too early to tell because we need prices to go up above this zone that we've just drawn and but not only above above the three lines as well to then indicate the uptrend okay the downtrend would then be indicated to us only after it pierces through we've got a candle going through pierces through the wall this this is what i call the wall made up by the two lines which is a strong support and resistance zone but more on the support side because you see the loads of touch point on the support side as opposed to the uh, resistance side okay so only after it comes downwards and pierces through that th this wall of uh, support and come under it then it would be biased to the downside because automatically if it comes under that it would be coming under all three lines as well okay guys is that clear all right <coughs> i just want to draw one pattern at least uh, so that you get an idea let's see whether we have got any patterns to actually draw that's euro gbp i think we have actually found a euro cat um let me just see euro cad or euro versus the canadian dollar as uh, you know has, has got some potential pattern that we can actually demonstrate to you guys okay let's just see whether i've got my euro cat right here 
let's look at it and let's look at the pair itself here and uh, we can see that you've got one hour chart you have got prices in between all three lines on the four hour chart as you go on there you can see that you know it's finding support finding support here and then it might be finding support not really confirmed yet but then the bias is to the upside with three lines pointing upwards as well now on the daily chart we have got more upward yeah trend now here i would like to draw um just to demonstrate because i can see it very clearly and you know with practice you are able to just spot patterns straight away with a single glance okay and it's it's actually quite fun thing to do now here for example if i uh, if I were to predict how far the market would go to the upside, I've got an ABCD bullish pattern that I call it. And I start off with a single line of A to B and then let's say B to C. Okay, This is for demonstration purposes only because we're going on to the daily chart, which is a long term type chart. But then this is the clearest that I can actually see at this moment of time in terms of pattern. Okay, so I've got an A right here. B and then that correction fall is C. Now I like the C point here because the C point has touched one of the lines and bounced upwards. That's great. Now, how do we actually then predict with just the ABCD pattern on where roughly the price could actually go to in terms of the upside? So you're predicting and forecasting the price uh, for the upside, correct? Right? So if you double click that one right there and you pull it right here, you just place that from the C point. Okay, so you could redraw your A to the B right there. Okay, now your A is usually the lowest point that you can see right there, and then your B is your high point right there, but your higher high point before that correction down to the C point right here. So here itself, it marks that end of that tip right there as your D point or your potential take profit area. But we're not taking profit right on the dot usually we need to adjust and tweak it based on principles of psychological numbers as well on the price okay <clears throat> so here for example i would say that okay there may be a probability of price reaching there that may be a probability that my tpa there could actually be there but where do we actually buy now you've got a b c and then d d is your take profit area right now, where do you enter? Where do you enter is when you've actually converted this simple ABCD pattern, okay, to a geometric ABCD pattern, just with a single line from A right to the D. Once you've done that, okay, let's adjust that a little bit, okay, you have got a center point across area of where there's been an intersection between the AD and the BC line, correct? And that little intersection right there, like a cross, like an X right there in the middle of it, is where you could mark it as something called the centroid. And I would then use this centroid area as my potential buy zone. So I would be buying anywhere above that line. That's my buy area, and I would be taking profit at there. So as simple as that, this is just to demonstrate to you how the geometric pattern actually works. Okay, we'll cover that in the geometric pattern basics as well tutorial on one of the Thursdays. <coughs> okay, so there you go, guys. Now you've got that, and I would have actually bought somewhere there, let's say, okay, um, above, let's say above somewhere, and I would take profit right under there, for example. Let's say the price now, that's already 480 plus pips, and that's actually on a daily chart. Now, this on a daily chart, the, the magic about patterns is that you've got a very big uh, pattern right here, and you would be able to find baby patterns and trade in stages of 30 to 40 pips or so per time by trading the C to D leg, but on a smaller pattern in smaller time frame. So that's the magic of it. So this one here, you could regard that as a big father or mother pattern. And then in within that C to D lake, you've got loads of baby, baby patterns that you can actually see and trade and write along that before until it reaches that high point. So how many ABCD little baby ones you can actually have, um, you know, and there may be loads because you can trade in stages of that big pattern. But then you want to look for these baby ones in the lower time frames. Okay, hope that makes sense. We'll cover all that practically as well during the tutorials anyway. Okay, <coughs> excuse me, guys. All right, so you've got that idea right there. So uh, you predict the D point there uh, with AB um, equals CD right there. Okay, hope that's clear. 
okay now the you've only got one single line that would give you an idea of where d could potentially reach uh, the other way is i use fibonacci as well and i try to determine where c point has actually reached now the c point uh, has touched i would say very close to the 61.8 percent uh, of a to b now 61.8 i've got a formula and i've made that into a table we'll cover that in the tutorial on how you predict uh, predict the um, D point based on Fibonacci ratio. So I've got a table where actually, uh, you know, I've been laid out. If the C point is at 61.8, then the D could easily be at um, 1.618. So what I then do is I pull my Fibonacci from this point now, B to C, and I look for the 1.618 ratio, which is right there. Okay, so that's quite close to where we have initially projected the D point to be. So that becomes sort of like my zone where I would mark these two lines here as a reversal, potential reversal zone that's also called a PRZ, which basically means that I wouldn't want to take profit exactly inside that zone. I would like to take profit before price reaches that zone. 1.5713, let's say. Uh, is the last line right there, right? It's the, uh, is the, is the bottom most line. So I would like to adjust that price further and um, understand that 1.5713 is quite close to 1.5700 psychological number. So what that actually means is that um, I wouldn't want to take profit at 5700 because that's where the reversal could happen. I would take 10 pips below 1.5700. So that would mean that my new take profit zone after tweaking all that just to increase my probability of my TP and reduce the risk of a reversal is to take profit at 1.57, sorry, 690, which is 10 pips under 5700. So there you go, 5690 is where I would have exited. Now, has the price reach 5690? It was at 5688, hasn't really reached 5690. Now, it's your choice. You could actually even take it at 1.5670, which is 10 pips below the 5680 psychological number. So there are various ways that we can actually choose the right um, lowest risk, highest probability TP area as well with several elements, several ingredients that can actually be um, added onto it as well. Okay, so this is just the basic most to give you an idea of how the patterns are drawn and how do you trade these patterns and what does the centroid mean and where do you trade? We usually trade the C to D, the last leg only. Okay, I, I would wait for the bigger boys to create the pattern of A to B, B to C, and I'm trading the C to D lake only. Okay, guys, hope that's clear for you guys. All right, so there you go. We've got one pattern drawn right there. Okay, um, let's see. Have you guys gotten any suggestion before I end up uh, end the session tonight on any um, currencies, currency pair that you guys would like to look at and uh, that you guys are trading currently and I, I could easily help you draw some patterns on there and, and look at it and give you a bit of a market outlook on the pairs that you guys are watching. Any um, suggestions of pairs that you guys want me to uh, look at? Kara, maybe yourself? Anybody else? Ibrahim? Okay. <coughs> Hi there, Kara. Uh, you would like to me to show to place the Fibonacci? Yes, okay. Um, yes, it, it may actually take a bit more time uh, than tonight to actually show you the Fibonacci because, it, yes, it can actually be a little bit complex, okay? Uh, now, when you're in a downtrend and you expect the downtrend, you want to pull from very top to bottom, okay? If you're expecting an uptrend from bottom to top. Now, the thing is that there are various strategies revolving the Fibonacci. Now, um, me as a trader, a geometric patterns trader, I use the Fibonacci ratio to confirm the pattern and to predict the D point. But you have got Fibonacci applied to various strategies to enter the market, to find reversal, exit, re-enter, all that kind of stuff. So um, you've got Fibonacci that needs to be understood um, based on the strategy that you wish it to apply into. 
Okay, I hope that makes sense. So it's really important when you pull your your Fibonacci. Basically, I'll just make it really simple for you. Okay, if you're looking into um, let's say let's say this upward move, you see this upward move. There's this uptrend from here up there. If you pull a Fibonacci from the bottom to the top, you're just wanting to know at which line automatically the line will appear. Okay, you can put your extra lines based on the Fibonacci, correct? Now, what that means is because this is an upward move, you want to solve the, the, the puzzle, you want to solve the riddle in knowing where can it be another rise in price at which level where where can price go up as simple as that if you want an uptrend you, you <coughs> if you want to know where can price go up again you pull from the bottom right to the top see all these yellow lines that i've drawn these yellow lines are automatic and they are all fibonacci ratios they've got numbers here at the sides 38.2 percent 50 percent that means um 50% of that move up there. The middle one is called the 50%, okay? So all these lines actually means that, now you've got prices here now, right? And you've got the, you see this candle right on the dot of 78.6? That actually means that um, candles, uh, I mean, price can actually go up either on this line here, that line, either one of these lines are potential support zone, okay? As simple as that. Now, let me now tell you about the downtrend let's say this one here is a fall correct of prices so you start from the top it fallen it fallen from the top to the bottom what you want to solve the riddle now is that where could prices fall okay so immediately you could see that it fallen from that point right there okay you could have fallen from that point too yes from that point too that point too which is here okay could be fallen from that point as well and that point and this is where it fallen as well so you see fibonacci ratios or the lines a horizontal line that you see automatically appears is to tell you <coughs> where can it rise again or where can it fall again depending on the trend that you have pulled it from okay all right good curve that's just a little snippet of it. We will we will cover uh, a lot more in the um, course. Okay, in the uh, in the um, in the actual uh, Thursday's uh, course structure, so that you can actually go into it more. I'll have that written onto the uh, presentation slides as well. Okay, guys. So that's basically it. Now, any more questions? Any anything else that you guys would like to ask? If I can actually cover it in like two three minutes, you know, if we it will be fine, no problem. So you guys can go on with questions, no problem. All good, Carl. Brilliant. Good. Okay. Um, any pairs that you guys want me to look at? Perhaps one one pair that we can look at at the moment before I uh, end the webinar tonight. Any pair that you're curious and wondering what's going to happen with it, or you probably are in the trade already, a little bit anxious in knowing whether it will continue to reach your um, TP or the opposite direction, things like that. We have got AUD USD, for example, and it's uh, finding itself in a support zone at this moment, and uh, it's still unpredictable of where prices are. So uh, it needs to go above that zone that you can see to give it an uptrend type bias. If not under it, it will give it a, a downtrend bias. Okay. So here, for example, on the daily chart, um, four hour chart, four hour chart and daily chart. Now daily charts is a little bit more unpredictable because you've got the uh, prices inside uh, or in between all three lines. Um, you've got under all three lines, but then the three lines are not giving you a clear direction. Okay, I think we've got questions right there. Sorry about that. Okay, um, USDJPY for Cara. Let's go to USDJPY, definitely. Um, let's see. I thought I had it here, but it's not there. I know I do. Okay, USDJPY, there you go. So um, here, I'll just go into the neutral one-hour chart right there. Uh, this one here we've covered a little bit uh, earlier on and basically on the usd jpy um, as i've mentioned as well earlier on we started with a one hour chart correct and uh, we have got the three lines just not not matching with the position of the candle uh, not no clear trend direction on the one hour chart 
four hour chart again it is in between three lines it's finding a bit of a resistance right there on one of the lines right there um, and the daily chart is giving you more bias to the upside uh, sorry more bias to the downside okay uh, but i've drawn that uh, line right there uh, so you've got a zone let's say on the four hour chart you've got a zone it needs to break out of that zone at this moment of time let's just go into the lower time frame 15 minutes chart uh, you can see that the 15 minute chart quite clear to the upside candles above it's matching with the way the three lines are moving up above as well pointing upwards uh, on the daily chart you've got some entanglement there so not really very very nice uh, you know it's, it's not giving you a clear uh, indication as well okay so that's that's a bit of a problem uh, on the 30 minutes chart if you see if you look to the right 1.0107.37 right um and 37 okay 38 let's say close to 40 if it goes upwards it will be close to the 50 psychological number but it's a little bit um it's a little bit early at this moment of time uh yes we can uh i'm like on nz the usd right after this not a problem um, give me a second so uh, here, for example, is just not giving me clear indication at the moment for the USD JPY. I'm just not ready uh, to uh, participate into a trade or execute a trade at this moment of time, mainly because of that um, mismatch between trend and all that. Because if you've got a mismatch, that actually means that you don't have a very long way to go in remaining in that trend. That's what it means. That's why I compare three time frames three time frames give me more data if all three time frames are let's say strong to the downside then i've got a very long way to participate in that trend okay if you've got mismatch in one pair uh, one time frame with the other time frame that actually means that you don't really have much um much enjoyment in riding a trend that could actually last for long so you want to actually participate and execute a trade in a long trending trend okay a, a trend that has got a, a a marathon of a time as opposed to a sprint of a time okay because then you'll be taken out of the market easily okay there you go um nothing much that i can actually draw out as well for you because it's just not very very clear so let's just go on to um nz the usd perhaps you're most welcome uh Cara. so we go on to the um I've got something here, I think, uh, for you guys on the Euro Cat. I think oh, that's the one that I've, I've actually drawn earlier on. Sorry. So we'll go on to Euro. Let's just just looking at one that I can replace. Um, let's just okay. Perhaps a new chart. And um, that was NZDUSD, was it? Okay, NZDUSD. Let me just check. Yep, yeah. NZDUSD. I'm going to remove the grid right there and I want to upload the or load the um, oops, taking a bit of time right there. Okay, uh, EMA lines. All right, okay. So here um, I'm starting with NZD USD on the one hour chart. As you can see on NZD USD, it's a little biased to the downside. You've got uh, three lines separated from one another, pointing slightly downwards. Not very steep though. Um, but let's just zoom up a little bit. Okay, you have got that angle of trend that is quite strong as well. This whole movement of candles and waves are pointing downwards at a very nice angle, like a five o'clock to six o'clock trend. So you could say that uh, you've got a buildup of uh, bearishness on the one hour chart for the NZD USD. Now here on the NZD USD, you've got that downtrend. Let's see whether it, it matches really nicely with the four hour chart or not. Now, the thing is that you've got the three lines, not really very nice on the four hour chart, to be honest. Uh, and you've got the candles moving downwards, but again, you've got a bit of a uh, what do you call it? entanglement going on there is the three lines are not pointing downwards as nice and easy as a one hour chart as you go into the daily chart you have got another mismatch uh, you've got candles uh, you know trying to find uh, support but it's above all three lines three lines are pointing upwards but again i would always like candles to be up and away above all three lines to give you that indication of, a, of that strength of the trend 
okay so at this moment of time not really nice let's move on to the set of three time frames lower time frames let's let's see whether we can build a story starting from the five minutes chart itself so the five minute chart let's say you have got three lines pointing downwards really nice not too bad uh, but candles candles are also under all three lines you've got a bit of a correction though going upwards at this moment of time let's look at what's going on five minutes uh, sorry 15 minute chart is giving you a bit clearer indication it's nice uh, downwards type uh, movement of three lines on the 30 minutes again you've got um slightly okay type uh you know downward type trend and as we go into the one hour you've got that as well so you've got a bit of a match between 15 minutes 30 minutes and one hour okay so now let's say i would like to draw a bit of a pattern here and i would like to see whether i've got a bearish abcd type pattern that i can look at as the clearest in which time frame um let's just go into the one hour let's say here for example we have now i would like to take that as my c point right here but you know it's not it's not really nice uh, mainly because you know if, if i take that a right here and my b is here uh problem with it is the c point i i like my c point to actually touch either one of these three lines or bounce off from either one of these three lines but uh, i don't i don't see that okay but we can easily draw still a pattern to see how far can that downtrend actually move um, on the nz uh, usd one hour chart okay it may not be as high as probability right there but if i've got my a b equals c d so my a to b is right there all right now you need to pull the fibonacci from a to b to look at where the C has actually landed. The C looks like it's at 38.2. That's good enough, okay? So 38.2 roughly is the minimum Fibonacci ratio. If not, if it is under 38.2% for the C point, uh, then the structure is not really a strong structure. Oops, I think I got that out. Okay, so I like the C point to be a minimum of 38.2%. So here you've got sort of a uh you know uh, abcd bearish type uh, pattern right here and it it gives you a little bit of an indication of where the d might actually be able to reach and it reached right on the dot uh of that line that we have projected so it's probably already reached so uh, here for example it still could easily be a pattern that you could have traded earlier on so where would you actually enter the trade is right in the middle zone right there so that middle zone would actually be we're looking at a one hour chart at the 7335 so i would i would buy i would sell so the only at the 7310 under the 20 psychological number let's say uh, but let's say the size of it roughly in terms of pip potential is about 100 pips right there so if you take away and tweak the price correctly and stuff like that uh you may then look into about 80 pips or so and still it's reasonable and um, 20 pips uh, sorry 80 pips on the one hour chart okay so that's basically still even though um you know a couple of rules says that it's not really high probability things like that but still it happened right on the dot as you can see your a b equals c d all right see how it happened like that okay and right on the dot as well and it start reversing right on the dot as well so then um that's just one line or one potential tp area so if i uh, pull my fibonacci from a to b i want to look at my c point uh, like i've mentioned earlier on it touched you know quite close to 38.2 now 38.2 percent uh, if you use fibonacci to predict your d point uh, 38.2 gives you two two areas that price could could reach one is 2.24 224 here and the other is 261.8 so here for example i've got one line that's really close to the a b equals c d and the other one's quite far reach right there so i've got three lines actually pointing out to me where d could potentially reach now these three lines could be made a zone and that zone can actually be marked as blue like that what that means is that i would like to take profit before price enters that blue area okay i would have taken that uh at 7 to 60 actually a little bit earlier but a little bit safe but as you can see it fallen to the dot ends at the usd so at this stage i would say that uh, you don't actually really have 
much of the opportunity at this moment of time until it gives you an indication that it's reversing. So it needs to come out of that zone a little bit. It did come out of the zone, but uh, you have got 72.44. Uh, prices is just, you know, um, sort of appreciating a little bit, 72.45. Uh, the problem with it is that the price now is really close to 0 0.72. 50. So that actually means if it's going up, it might actually just come back down again a little bit. Okay, so let's go to the four hour chart. Let's see a bigger sort of picture. Bigger sort of picture gives you a lot of support type zone. So uh, there may be a potential of it shooting upwards again. Okay, on the support uh, type zone. So that's basically for the NZD USD guys. Okay, is that clear? Um, yeah, clear. Uh, this um, a recording, I mean, this, this uh, a webinar will be recorded, so please contact your account manager at Tickmail. And uh, once you've opened an account with Tickmail and have uh, a live account, uh, you would be able to get the recording uh, directly from your account manager. Okay, so do contact your account manager and you'll get a recording. So uh, there are some traits, there's some uh, skills, uh, some techniques and things like that that you can learn from today. So um, do try to get the recordings and, and build your own portfolio of, um, of um, videos that you can refer to at any moment of time and, you know, um, look back and, uh, and learn from it and apply it onto your charts. Okay, there you go. So, um, yeah, I think uh, that's all I, I have for you guys. I hope you guys actually enjoyed that webinar. Um, and if there's anything else, uh, kindly feel free uh, to email uh, Tickmail. And uh, you can email your account account manager as well at uh, chris, C-H-R-I-S, at tickmail.com. And for any questions, you know, email. And uh, Chris will get back to you guys too. Okay. And there you go. All right. Thank you, Kara, for that. <laughs> Appreciate that. Appreciate your time, everybody, uh, for joining me. I mean, you could have been doing a much more interesting things, watching TV, you know, uh, maybe your dinner time as well. So you guys being here, I appreciate it. Uh, so I would like to uh, say a very big thank you for joining my webinar tonight. Uh, do join me again every Tuesdays uh, for Live Market Outlook. And uh, you can always email Chris at tickmill.com, uh, your account manager, and uh, be able to, you guys, you know, feel free to to um, uh, mention the topics that you want or, you know, um, how you're enjoying your webinar and uh, what would you expect for the webinar the next time, what are the topics that you would expect and would like me to cover on, uh, and uh, what are your concerns, especially with trading that I can help with as well. So you can always email and email that to chris, C-H-R-I-S, at tickmill.com okay guys i would like to say a big thank you once again and uh do join me tuesdays as well as thursdays thursdays your course tutorial uh same time and uh and i uh, will see you guys again thank you bye bye have a very good night guys bye bye